Hello, my name is Allison Seaman and I'm a physician assistant with the Head and Neck Surgery Clinic in the Swedish Cancer Institute. I've been asked to speak with you today about what you can expect with head and neck cancer surgery, particularly free flap surgery, and hopefully I can address some of your questions and concerns. If you've recently been diagnosed with head and neck cancer and are thinking about surgery, you and your loved ones are probably feeling overwhelmed. We understand that it is not easy to prepare mentally and emotionally for a major surgery. Just know that we are ready to hold your hand and guide you every step of the way. Free flap surgeries are big surgeries that usually last all day. For the educational purposes of this podcast, I will be addressing patients who are candidates for such a procedure. However, I hope that the content of this lecture will be helpful to anyone preparing for head and neck surgery. First, I will define in very simple terms what we mean by free flap. After the cancer is removed from your body, we will need to cover or fill the wound. We do this by taking tissue such as muscle, skin, and bone, if necessary, from somewhere else on your body and then using it to patch the wound. We can take tissue from various sites such as the arms, the legs, the chest, and the back. This transplanted tissue is called a free flap. In order for the free flap to survive and stay healthy, the tissue needs blood supply. We will reconnect the tiny vessels under a microscope to keep the blood flowing to the newly repaired area. If you are planning to have a free flap procedure, you will need to be ready for this major operation. You will likely require a week's stay in the hospital, Patients that have had this surgery will have a number of special needs afterwards, both in the hospital and after going home. My goal as a physician assistant, or a PA, is to make sure things run smoothly and you stay informed throughout the process. When getting ready for this type of surgery, the most important thing you can do is eat a healthy diet and maintain your weight. We understand this may be difficult if you have pain in your throat or trouble swallowing. Just do the best you can. Many head and neck cancer patients either smoke heavily or used to in the past. If you are still smoking, you should try to stop. Even a week or two without tobacco can improve your lung function, which makes for a quicker and easier recovery. Ask me about getting some help to quit. If you are regularly drinking alcohol, please tell us. It is very important that the surgical team knows if you're drinking or using drugs and how often. This may affect how we care for you in the hospital. Please try to stop drinking or at least cut back before surgery in an effort to boost your health. Light exercise before surgery is allowed and encouraged if you can tolerate it. On the day of surgery, you will need to come to the main hospital about two hours before your surgery start time. This usually means around 5.30 a.m. I realize this is very early, but it is important that we start on time. We often encourage family members and friends not to stay at the hospital the day of surgery. The procedure will be very long and can last sometimes up to 8 to 12 hours but we will call you as soon as surgery is over with an update. Lastly, when the operation is finished, it is not uncommon for patients to be kept asleep and on a breathing machine for that first night. After free flap surgery, patients will stay in the intensive care unit for about three days. This is not because you are not stable, but because we need the nursing staff to watch the free flap very closely. The intensive care unit can be a difficult place to be. It will be noisy and you will be woken up often to be checked on. But after your stay in the intensive care unit, you will be moved to a surgery unit that is quieter. Most patients undergoing head and neck cancer surgery cannot eat by mouth right after the operation. If the doctor feels that it will be unsafe to eat by mouth, we will slide a narrow tube down your nose into your stomach during surgery. So this tube is referred to as a nasogastric tube or NG tube for short. It allows us to ensure that you, you are getting the nutrition you need to heal. Sometimes a feeding tube can be a bit uncomfortable 
but it is only temporary. Please do not try to eat or drink anything before we tell you that it is okay. Oral hygiene is important after these surgeries, especially if we are operating in your mouth. We will explain to you how to keep your mouth clean while you are in the hospital and when you go home. Now there is usually some pain after surgery. Everyone has different pain tolerances. There are a variety of pain medications and we will be able to find the right combination for you to keep your pain controlled. Patients with good pain control may heal faster and therefore it is important to take the medication if you need it. However, it is normal to experience constipation when you are taking these medications. If necessary, we will give you something to help with the constipation. You will probably have a drain, possibly more than one, near your surgical incision. This will stay in for a couple days. A temporary drain is needed after surgery to keep the swelling down. Sometimes, although not often, patients need to go home with the drain still in place for a few days. Once you are awake and clear-headed, the therapists and the nursing staff will help to get you out of bed. Activity after surgery is very important. It helps improve your circulation and lung function, your bowel function, and increases your stamina. You will walk in the halls with assistance daily. The head and neck surgery team will let you know when you have healed well enough to leave the hospital. Most patients will require some assistance. Home health care is available and often necessary. Depending on your needs, a short stay at a skilled nursing facility might also be an option. But this is typically not necessary. I am a firm believer that patients get better sleep and heal the best in their own homes. If you have a spouse, family member, or friend that can help you, we will instruct them about your needs. If you live alone, you may need some home health care until you are able to manage on your own. There are plenty of support services available for patients during this process. Ask me about these support options and resources. Unless told otherwise, it is okay to shower and get your incisions wet. Just pat them dry gently afterwards. If your incisions need any extra care, such as dressings, the surgical team will let you know and teach you exactly what to do. Otherwise, just keep your wounds clean and protected from the sun. You will have some side effects from the surgery and, and the general anesthetics. The main effect is usually fatigue, which may last up to a week or two after the procedure. This is normal and you should take plenty of time off work to allow yourself time to rest and recuperate. Expect swelling to your neck and face after your operation. It's also common to have some numbness to the skin of your neck and face. The feeling should gradually come back with time. If you need to go home on tube feedings, which is very common for our patients, your case managers in the hospital will make arrangements with an agency that provides tube feeding formula and supplies. Patients and their family members will be taught how to set up and give the tube feeding formula at home. You may need some physical and or occupational therapy to build back your strength. If this is necessary, we will arrange for a therapist to come to your home and work with you. Depending on your cancer staging, some patients will need additional treatment after surgery, such as chemotherapy or radiation. This will be discussed in your first or second post-operative visit. Your first post-operative visit in the office will be anywhere from a couple days to a week after discharge. You should plan on seeing us frequently for the first month or two. After that, we will begin to space out your visits. But it is very important that you keep your follow-up appointments. It is likely that you will need some speech and swallow therapy. If this is necessary, we will refer you to a speech pathologist. Speech therapy is especially important for those patients who will need radiation to their throat after surgery. After surgery, you are usually safe to drive once you are no longer taking pain medications. However, you should check with your doctor first. When you have regained your energy, light exercise such as walking is welcomed and encouraged. But don't overdo it. Ask your surgeon before trying more vigorous forms of exercise. Lastly, I want to emphasize the importance of giving up habits such as smoking or drinking. 
This can have a great effect on both your recovery as well as your risk of cancer recurrence. This podcast titled, What to Expect from Head and Neck Cancer Surgery, is meant to be a general overview of free flap surgery and recovery. I hope that you found this helpful and reassuring as you plan for your procedure. Thank you for listening to Plugged In to Your Health Cancer Podcast Program. For more information, please contact or visit the Cancer Education Center for materials and resources.